This is a brand new 2024 uh, Wrangler Sport. And it's got a couple of cool things on this one. It's got the 2-liter dual overhead cam engine in it with the turbocharger. So uh, when you pair that up with the 8-speed automatic that it's got, you get really good fuel economy. And it's, you know, if you haven't had a chance to drive one, you should take it for a spin. They're uh, they're quite peppy. Like, they got a lot of zip to them. And the fuel economy is pretty good as well, too, which is kind of nice. Uh, a couple other things that uh, come standard on this package. comes with a backup camera, push-button start. Uh, this particular package also has the new 12-inch uh, touchscreen display on the dash, which we're going to take a look at when we hop inside. Uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, it's got some off-road pages, which I want to show you when we get in there, when we kind of scroll through some of the new screens, which is pretty nice. Uh, we did add a few extra goodies. Um, also comes with the 17-inch aluminum wheels, Gorilla Glass. Uh, the uh, which is great. It also comes with the adaptive cruise control, which is kind of uh, kind of a nice thing for this year. We're going to kind of take a look at some of that and how it operates. Also comes with the um, uh, convenience group on this one, which gets you the uh, heated steering wheel, heated seats, remote start. Uh, also comes with a, a little bit better dash, uh, like the dash cluster. Comes with a seven-inch screen, so it gives you a little access to a little bit more information there. And then, of course, we added the hard top. On the sports, the standard top is a fabric top, and I always like to order them for the, with the hard top. It just makes them a little bit better in the wintertime when you're driving them. And they're pretty easy to take off. We're going to take a look at some of, the, some of the stuff for that as well when we get to the inside. So across the front, we kind of get started here. You'll notice that the fender flares are done in a black. This is a black plastic. Okay, so these are nice and easy to replace. That's the advantage of going with this, um, with these uh just at my clipboard down there. The advantage of going with this is that the um, if you do get these munged up, like let's say you break them or you bust them, say you run into something and get some damage, they're just they're nice and easy to replace, and they're actually not all that expensive. If you go to the higher trim models, they'll come with a painted to match one. Uh, they're a little bit more like you got to go to a body shop and get it painted and stuff like that. So if you're going to be doing lots off road, and these are great. Plus they stand up pretty good to like rock chips and stuff like that. Like they don't get beat up as bad. Uh, rims are real nice. These are the 17-inch rims that we talked about. You can also see it's got the all-weather uh, tires on there. These are the Nexon tires, so they're good in the winter, in the summer. Like they've got the like the all-weather rating on them. Uh, I still believe in a truly dedicated winter tire myself, but uh, these are pretty. They're they're pretty good if you're going to be driving in the winter in the snow. Like they're rated for that. Like you don't have to buy new tires if you don't want to. Across the front, you got of course the Jeep grill with the vertical bars. Uh, that's been kind of refreshed a little bit for this year. You'll also see it's got the uh, Jeep headlights. They're, they're still running with the with the little logo. And the, if you look real close, you can kind of see on the they got like a little Jeep grill built right in there. So it's uh, into the reflector part of the headlights. So it kind of looks neat. Fog lights uh, down below built right into the bumper. So those are great if you're being doing lots of off-road driving, or if you're driving in the um, in the winter time. That extra lighting really comes in handy. Also have the uh, tow hooks on the front for your tow ropes. So you can just kind of loop a tow rope around there and pull your buddy out when he's stuck. On the side, let's go take a look. I want to show you a couple things. First off, this hood does fold down. You just There's a pin here, and it'll actually pivot on there. There's a couple of bolts, and it'll just lay down, and it rests on top of these little straps. There's a kit you can buy through parts, and it'll actually strap your windshield down, so it'll hold it in place when you're driving. You'll also see on the window you've got a built-in antenna in here now for 2024. It's also got the little the little uh, camera lights there, uh, camera lens, uh, rear defrost button that you can kind of activate. So that's all part of some of the new electronics that are on them. On the door handle, it's got a push little push button here for locking your doors. It's got a remote proximity keyless entry, so as long as the keys are in your pocket, all you got to do is press that button to lock the doors and, and unlock them. You just got to grab the door handle. Inside, redid the interior a little bit. It's just kind of a refresh, but you can kind of see the seat fabric's a little bit different now. They've got the gold stitching done in on the seats on the sports, so everything's done in a, in a little bit of finish that way. You have a fabric inset on the dash, too, now for 2024. There's your dash fence. And everything's got, like, little gold accents, so everywhere you're looking, there's going to be, like, some gold stitching. That's the bigger touchscreen. We'll take a look at that when we get over to the driver's side. On the doors, uh, in here, we've got your glove box. There's your owner's manual. Also has like a little kit in here, show you that as well. There's a little socket set built right into here. Just put, um, pull it out of the bag, trying to do it one hand, it's a little bit awkward. There we go. So you can see you got like a little little wrench and, a, and your, all your keys for taking all your bolts off. So if you want to pull your roof off or pull the doors off, 
you don't have to go buy a new tool kit, you just use the one that comes with it. Also has this little access pan plastic cover panel. So if you fold down the windshield when you're doing some off-roading, this just covers up the electronics package on the other side of this window. So it just snaps in place. That way if you do get mud in there, it's not getting into the electronics. So that's the idea behind that. Uh, floor mats. You can see it's got these little snap buttons in there to hold them in place so they don't move around. To take them out, you just undo that. You can take them out and hose the mats off. There's also a little plug access point in here. Just lift this up. You can see there's a little plug in there. If we took this little fabric piece off, you can pull that plug, and that way if you get lots of mud in the floor, like say you take all your carpeting out, and you're out 4x4, four four and you can hose all the mud down, and it'll run down out that hole is the idea behind it. Um, I don't think I'd want to do that to a nice truck like this, but you could if you wanted to. Grab handle here on the 8-pillar for pulling yourself in and out, so it makes it easy to get in inside and outside of the vehicle. It also gives you something to kind of hold on to when you're 4x4. Four same with this grab handle right here on the, on, the, on the passenger side. You can hold on to that, too. That comes in pretty handy if you're driving around without the doors on and stuff. Um, it uh, gives you a little more sense of uh, security. On the doors, uh, that pocket's built right into them. They've got power locks. And these doors, like I said, are real easy to take off. There's just the two pins on the outside, and you just undo that little strap there, and it'll just disconnect. In the back, we've got privacy glass, so this is all blacked out along the back. Keep the, gives you a lot darker inside. It's a little harder to see inside, so it makes it a little bit more secure for your rear passengers. Plus, if you've got, like, little kids and stuff that's not as hot back here, it helps keep it a bit cooler for them. Rear seats, a couple things I want to show you. There's two levers over here. I'm going to pull the first one. You can see the first one, what it does is it just folds down the headrest. The idea would be is that you would fold the headrest down, and then you can access the... Um, you can seal the back window better, and then when you have a passenger, you just kind of flick it back up again, and then they can protect themselves in case for whiplash. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. If I pull the other handle, pulls the whole thing forward, and then the whole seat lays down. So this will just fold forward like that, and it gives you a bit more of a flat load floor and access to the rear. So if you've got something a bit longer and you need to kind of slide it in, you can do that. Same thing happens on the passenger seat as well. It folds forward just like we did on this side. Uh, center console in the back, we've got power window switches right here, and then they've got their own dash vents for the AC. So if you crank the AC up, it's going to blow up these vents, and you, they can kind of direct them where they want it to blow. Um, floor mats, same thing. These are pinned in the back as well, and they've got a couple pins. So if you want to take them out, they're nice and easy to do that with to clean. Some back pockets, some storage bins in the back of the seat pockets there so you can store stuff. And same thing with the doors, more map pockets, lots of storage and nooks and crannies to store stuff. On the rear of the vehicle, we got the spare tire mounted to the back gate. That's kind of a Jeep thing, right? Plus, it looks cool. And here's your backup camera. It's built right into this little piece here. And you can see another one of them little socket bolts for taking this off. So if you have to change your tire, you'll need to take this piece off. And then you can take your spare tire off and then put it in the vehicle if you want. Two handles. Pull the handle here. Or probably one handle, I guess. And then you got to flip up the, uh, the glass by hand. So... Um, this gives you access to the rear. Now, when you take all these bolts off, we've got a cool little storage area in here. You can see it's got all these little bolt holes here, these little holes. You just kind of slide them in there, and then when you go to put it back together, you hopefully didn't lose all your bolts. Plus, you've got a nice little bin here in the bottom for some storage. You can keep some things in here. It's a great place to keep, like, an extra set of work gloves and jacks and that kind of stuff. That's what it looks like when you pop the plug. You can see, like, the little metal flashing underneath. So, same thing. Get a bunch of gooping in there. You can hose it down real easy and, and drain it out. Also have a little power point back here, so if you need to plug something in, you can do that. Um, like if you want to run like a little mini compressor for like, you know, filling up like a inner tube or something like that, a guy could do that. To take the roof off, it's real easy. These are the bolts. You can see there's three of them, one, two, and then there's another one over there for the three. You just undo those three, and there's a couple of screws up front on the, on the uh, roll bar there that you undo, and then the, just the whole hard top lifts off. Um, you gotta, you got to disconnect the uh, rear wiper, too, when you do that, which is fairly easy. Just unclip it. It doesn't take too long to take the roof off. It's a little bit awkward. You're going to want somebody to give you a hand. Uh, the other thing you should do is make sure when you take the roof off, you put it somewhere where the wind won't catch it because it's fairly light. And if the big windstorm comes up, it's going to take your, your, your uh, top and flick it across your yard and bang it all up and break it on you. So just a food for thought with that. In here, this bag, this is for your Freedom Hardtop. So uh, what this does is, I'll show you when we get to the driver's seat, how to unscrew the top. But basically, it comes apart as in two pieces, and then you can just slide them inside this bag. So you can make, like, the, the right above your driver's seat a uh, convertible, and then you put the, put the roof in here, and then it gets stored. And that way, if you're driving down the road, 
it's going to rain on you or something, you can pop the roof back in real quick. It's super easy to do. I tell everybody on these videos that it's, it'll take you longer to figure out how to put the roof in the bag than it will to actually take the roof off because we only fit in the bag one way, and sometimes you've got to pill around to get used to it. Okay, on this side here, uh, we'll take a look inside the dry, or passenger side. You can kind of see how this seat folds down too. Same thing with the two levers. You can kind of see if you just want to get like a little access point, you can do that. You'll also see it has the um, the little hooks here for the car seats that built into the back. So if you got like a little guy, you're putting him in a car seat, you got all the extra strapping for that so you can secure it properly so it's nice and safe for the for your kids. All right, in the driver's side, we've got power locks, we've got power mirrors, so those are all your buttons for there. Obviously, you don't need your power locks if you take your doors off, and you don't need your power mirrors if you take your doors off because the mirrors are mounted to the door. There is aftermarket mirror kits that you can get that will sit in either the door pins. I've also seen them where you can buy a kit which will mount. You take these pieces off, and then you mount your mirrors onto here, and I've seen kits that adapt, and they mount onto the door pin. So it just depends what you want to do and what you end up buying. But there is accessories that you can buy for, for the Jeeps. In fact, there's, like, literally you can spend $100,000 on accessories on your Jeep if you want to. There's just tons and tons of stuff that you can buy. Okay, on the driver's seat, a couple things. This strap here, if you pull this, that's your tilt, so that releases it so you can tilt your back, uh, the back of the seat forward and up, or recline it, I guess. This one here moves it up and down. So if you pull this lever, we're raising the seat height up, and if you push this down, we're lowering the seat height. So it allows you to get a lot more comfortable. So if you're a bit shorter, you can kind of lift it up and see over the hood a little bit better, uh, or you can make it easier to get in and out just by raising the height so, it's, so it fits you properly. This little button here is the uh, lower back support. If you spin that wheel, it'll push out a little uh, little panel in the rear part of the seat, and that'll give you a lot more lower back support when you're driving. Okay, we're going to fire it up here now, look at some of the extra buttons. First off, we've got automatic headlights. So what your automatic headlights are going to do, as soon as it's dark enough out, uh, the little sensor is going to pick that up and just turn your headlights on for you. And then we got our dash brightness for our speedo and our tack and all that kind of stuff. So this is for your gauges. You can increase that when you're driving. Okay, a couple things on the steering wheel. It is a heated steering wheel, so it's nice leather wrap. And you'll see that gold stitching thing continues. they got a nice double stitch weave going on there, which looks great. Over on this side, we've got a little control panel. This controls everything in the center dash. We'll take a look at that here real quick. You've got some hands-free buttons for grabbing phone calls if the phone rings. On this side, we've got our cruise control. We've got two cruise controls. You've got your normal one, and then we've got an adaptive cruise. Basically, the difference between the two is normal cruise works just like normal cruise would, so you basically set how fast you'd like to go. Whereas the adaptive cruise control, you set the distance you want between you and the vehicles and the speed you'd like to go. And what it'll do is if you're driving down the road and you're about to catch up with somebody and kind of run into them, it'll actually reduce the, um, it'll reduce the, the speed the vehicle's going in order to maintain that set distance. So really nice for longer road trips. Okay, so on the dash, a couple things. We're going to scroll through these screens pretty quick. We've got a nice big tack over here. And on the other side, you've got a nice big speedometer so it's easy to read. On the center dash... You've got a speedometer. You can switch that between miles per, miles per hour and kilometers per hour if you're going to the States, that kind of stuff. Vehicle info screens, like tire pressure. It's got anything, anything to do with your vehicle. So it's going to talk to you about all your oil temperatures and coolant temperatures, that sort of stuff. Off-road screen just kind of tells you where your power is going. You've also got a pitch and roll screen that we can look at. Uh, so it'll tell you how steep of a hill you're climbing, that kind of stuff. Adaptive cruise, you can turn it off and on through there. Fuel economy uh, just tells you your mileage that you're getting. There's a couple of different screens, so you can reset one. So you can see I reset the second one, but I haven't lost my data on the first screen. So what's nice about that is it lets you keep track of two different things at the same time. Same thing with the tripometer. It does the same thing. You can reset the one trip and still keep all your information from the first one. Uh, start, stop. Uh, what this does is if you're sitting at a stoplight, it's going to automatically shut off, and then as soon as you take your foot off the brake, it'll restart. This just tells you it's not operating right now because I don't have my seatbelt on. Uh, next screen we go to is just what's playing on the radio station. It tells you the name of the artist, that kind of stuff, the station you're listening to. Messages are like check engine lights, that sort of thing. It'll just store them there, and then when you get a chance to get some work done, you can get it looked at. And this is where you set your screen up. So in here you can kind of go in and you can change all your gauges uh, to set up the information that you like to have. I always like to have a clock up there, so I'll just change that to the clock now instead of the compass. But it's totally customizable, and 
What's nice about that is it gives you the ability to change what's showing up on these screens. So when you're driving, you know, you look and look down and have all the information that you want. Because, you know, really I don't care what direction I'm going normally. So it's up to everybody's indifferent, so you can program that the way you like. Okay, let's look at the new touchscreen for 20, uh, 2024. So this is a 12-inch touchscreen. It's nice and wide, so it's got a lot better visibility. A couple things I want to point out. You've got some screens here. The way I've got it set up right now is we've got the temperature on this side, and on the far side we've got the radio stations. But you can go in and change these. You can add different screens. You can change that to, say, I want the uh, heated seats on this side. And let's say on this side I wanted to add, uh, well, let's add another page. We can just add a page. That's probably the easiest. We can pick a layout. Now you can go into your layout, and then you can add everything you want. So let's say I want my heated seats here. Here I'd like my climate control. And then maybe on the far side we'll put on what's playing on the radio station. So now you can see I've got it all set up the way I like it. And then you can change your temperatures and everything all off the touch screen. But once again, everything's there. If you decide down the road you don't like a page, you know, you can kind of go in there and delete them, get rid of them. You know, it's all that it makes it super easy to customize it. So you can kind of lay out everything the way you want it. Media, this is just any, this is just a dedicated stream for the radio stations. They're how you're getting your music in here. So you've got Sirius XM, AM, FM, lots of different sources. These are all the different ways that you can get your music to come through the stereo. You've got USB ports, one and two, auxiliary inputs, Bluetooth. Uh, if they're blocked, they're available to you. If they're kind of this grayed out area, they're not hooked up. So there's nothing plugged into the auxiliary. If I plug my phone in there, the auxiliary grip button would light up in kind of a black color, so it makes it easier to, to hook up. Uh, a couple of other things you can do, although I, I should probably mention, there's a phone button here. If we paired my phone up, it would show up here. Uh, but what I, with the newer phones, I would highly recommend you yeah, download Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and then it would show up in here. And then that way you can access the music off your phone. So if you've got music saved on there, you listen to Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you listen to, it'll all show up on here and have your access to that. I, I listen to Apple Music a lot now. So, so when I turn my vehicle on, I, I, a lot of times I just use the Apple CarPlay app. The other nice thing about using the, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is your, your maps. Uh, like if you Google Maps and stuff like that, the map selection show up on the touch screen. So you don't actually have to use the nav. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to do that. Although you do burn your data up, but I find Google Maps a lot easier to use than some of the vehicle nav system. I find it's easier just to get the instructions to it quicker. Uh, comfort screen, just a bigger screen of the uh, temperature controls. There's push buttons down here for them as well, but up here is that if you prefer to use the digital inputs to get to the screen, you can do that. Phone we talked about. Vehicle settings. I did want to show you this off-road pages. So when you're, uh, this is your vehicle dynamics, so it tells you if your transfer case is locked or unlocked and what your steering angle is. You've also got a bigger pitch and roll screen. We kind of looked at that earlier in that center console screen, but this is just a bigger version of it. But it's also got these cool accessory gauges that you can access, which is all your vehicle information screen, your oil temperature, coolant temperature, all that kind of stuff. It's all laid out there for you on one big digital screen so you can monitor what's going on when you're 4x4. Four four. I thought that was a pretty cool feature. Okay, so down below, uh, we've got a couple little vents here for your AC. Nicely, they're, they're so uh, they're kind of streamlined right in there, so you don't even really notice them, but they are there. Uh, on our heater controls, you got heated seats, heated steering wheel, automatic climate control. Basically, just set what you'd like your temperature to be and hit auto, and the vehicle will do it all for you. It'll decide how much air to blow, where to blow it, all that kind of stuff. The nice thing too with this is it's got two zones: one for the driver and one for the passenger. So if the passenger's freezing to death, they can crank the heat up get a little heat blown on them, and then the driver doesn't have to have the heat blown on them. Now, obviously, you're still in the same vehicle, but, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to adjust that a little bit. A um, couple other things. We've got power windows here. You can move open and close your windows. We've also got a lockout switch, so you can lock out your rear windows so they don't operate the buttons on the back if the kids are playing with it. That's where your media input ports are, so you can plug in your cell phone through there to use if you want to go that way, or maybe you got an old iPod or something like that with a bunch of old music on it, you can use that too. Uh, Four-wheel drive, pretty straightforward. You just pull the lever just like you did in the old days, okay? So you're going to have to reach on that and, and give her a good tug. It's an, actually a mechanical activation as well, so it's not like a switch inside the transfer case. You're actually manually engaging when you pull on that lever. Same thing if you go into four low. 
Uh, automatic transmission, just pick the gear you want to be in. Most of the time you're just going to use drive, to be honest with you. It does have a manual mode you can activate, and then you can use the shift paddle. You can just tap it up and down if you want to, to shift gears, um, just like this. That's how you shift up, and that's how you would shift down. Um, maybe a little, it's a little bit handier, I guess, if you're, you know, if you're off-roading. You can kind of keep it in a certain gear that you want to be in. Or if you want to downshift, you're going down a big steep hill or something, you can shift down in manual mode and let the uh, vehicle hold you back. Basically, what you're doing when you go into manual mode is you're telling how, the transmission how many of the eight gears you're going to let it use. So I'm going to let you use, like, the first four gears. After that, you, you can't use them anymore. So it, it gives you a lot more control over the vehicle. Uh, nice cup holders. A little place here to sit your cell phone. You can just kind of set it in there, and, and it'll stand straight up and down. Over here, we've got a rem our key fob. You've got lock, unlock. You've got a remote start built into it. You also got a key blade that kind of flicks out like that, so you can lock and uh, lock your key or lock your glove box and lock your lid if you want, and then it just folds back in when you're done. The other nice thing you look at the key the key fob it's kind of a thick plastic look to it. Uh, it's kind of it's waterproof, so if you drop it in a mud puddle, it's not going to wreck all the electronics in there. That's why it's built like that. So everything on this is built to to go off road and not get wrecked. On your armrest. If you lift it up, that's that keyhole that we're talking about. So you put that blade key in there and then lock that, and it'll stop you being able to access what's in here. So the idea with that is, is if you are got all your doors and your roof off and you stop to go inside to have a bite to eat somewhere, uh, you can lock up your, some of your personal items inside here, and nobody can steal it because obviously your, your truck, your car is wide open, right? Same thing underneath. There's some more storage under here. We have another USB port there to plug your cell phone into, too, so that's your second one if you want to use that. That's another way to, to get your stuff charged up. On the roof, I just want to show you real quick how, to, how easy it is to pop this roof, take this roof off. Okay, so this is a Freedom hardtop. You'll see there's a seam here. This is the driver's side, and this is the passenger side. They're both the same. You drop this lever here. We spin this lever here. We go to the back. We spin this lever here and spin this lever here, and now the, you can kind of see I pop the roof open to the outside. It's that easy to take the T-roof off. And same thing to put it back on, you just throw all the levers and you're done with it. Um, once you lift that out, you just got to figure out how to put it in that bag in the back, and you're good to go. So it's easy, that easy to turn this little guy into a convertible. Okay, uh, I think I've kind of touched on everything real quick for you on the Jeep. Um, if you're interested in getting yourself a new Wrangler, these are probably one of the most fun vehicles you're ever going to own. Uh, we'd invite you to give us a call. Let's get together and have a cup of coffee, and uh, we'll send you home in a new Jeep. Hope to see you soon.